Attention, attention please, stand by for another episode of When Humanists Attack. What is mass psychosis? Evening, this is Roger Kimmel Smith for When Humanists Attack with my co-hosts Chris West and Vincent Downing. And we're going to react to a video about mass psychosis put out by the after school project of the organization Academy of Ideas. Let's get right to it. This video starts with this wonderful quote from Gustave Le Bon uh, from the psychology of uh, the crowd, La Foule. An intro from Gustave Le Bon. Uh, I've never heard of this guy before personally. Psychology but... of crowds, early 20th century, pre-World uh, War II. So this, is, this sets the stage, right? We've got this uh, discussion about uh, a, a nefarious uh, possibility that people can can uh, uh, manipulate people and have them as their victims, which is a theme we're going to be seeing through the whole thing. So the Academy of Ideas defines mass psychosis as the a large portion of the population losing touch with reality and descending into delusions. We're actually uh, following the video fairly closely in that we're looking at a particular kind of mass psychosis, which is totalitarianism, uh, mm -hmm. and how it, uh, uh, how it occurred in various places, the general principles behind it in, during the last century. Although um, they give another good example of uh, the, the witch trials in North America, you know, another way of thinking about how a population can go crazy. Well, you mentioned the Dutch tulip craze. Well, the witch, you know, witch trials but, in, happen, but of course, the, 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 the witch trials in time. the witch trials in Europe, uh, yes. basically, was what they were talking about. But sure, the witch trials in North America, too. Uh, and I'd like to say it's that right across an ocean, the 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 principles underlying this video have been familiar to me since I was a teenager of about 15. And I read uh, George Orwell's 1984, where he gives us another really good example of what a population becomes like when this sort of thing is exercised uh, systematically. Let's get more into I think like what we think is actually going on out there and why this video concerns us enough to make a, a reaction video to it. Um, because uh, spoiler alert, I think the, uh, the, the process of the slide into totalitarianism is well underway uh, in certainly oh, in the United States, well underway, uh, probably a lot further than I as an individual really even wants to credit that we are just, you know, out of whatever false hope, et cetera. Uh, how about you, Chris? What do you think about that particular? I think that we're seeing challenges to our civil society that we haven't seen before. We have technologies that are affecting us in ways that we've never interacted with before. It's a completely new place. Uh, television was called the, the boob tube for, for a very long time. And and part of that was because it lobotomized people. The whole idea is that it, it made your brain mush. Um, and now people are able to be on their television uh, in their hands uh, every waking hour. And um, I think that the graphics that they use, I mean, the one that's on the screen right now is a really good uh, indication of, of the uh, approach that the, the Academy is taking here. Uh, and I'm, I'm with it. I've been noticing uh, just in my own life um, how I've been affected by too much uh, screen time with Facebook and TikTok and, and other things that I've been doing, some of which I think is a very good place to get my thoughts and ideas out, but I'm still doing it. And I feel myself affected psychologically by that. And, uh, and I think I'm a pretty self-aware person. I can imagine uh, the majority of people who are not at all aware of how this is affecting them. And they're just saying, oh, life is different and uh, just going with it. I think there's certainly are schizophrenic qualities to many of the, the media that we uh, use and consume daily as a whole. But I think we're also now in a period 
where media and other uh, things are all being weaponized. We have a, uh, a political party that has promoted and descended into irresponsibility. I mean, this is uh, one of the key elements of the, uh, the idea of a uh, society under totalitarianism. People become irresponsible. Uh, not responsible to truth, not responsible to one another, descending into delusions about what is fact. And I, I mean, this is the keystone of the era we're in because we have one of these two, we have two political parties in our United States, right? With the, the D's and the R's, but the, you know, if R is uh, for responsible, they don't deserve to have an R because this is a party of complete irresponsibility. Psychosis, here it is, and violence, of course, is the last piece of it. Propaganda and violence are inextricably related, was one of the key points of, uh, of Mein Kampf, embraced by the party we're up against. And this is also very clearly uh, the effect of a cognitive, cognitive dissonance, right? People are seeing things that are contrasting with what they're, they're told things are, and that creates an unease. We know that very clearly because we've we've also uh, I've had experience but we've also looked at people who are coming out of deeply held fanatic beliefs and and their that psychosis once it leaves gives them kind of a view of things like holy holy crap what have I been <laughs> what have I been thinking what have I been doing um and uh I I think that it's been incredibly normalized uh to the point where if you're not doing it, like if you're asked to turn in your phone for an evening, uh, people are like, ooh. Um, so, uh, but I'd like to jump into and, and, and get a little more of, the, of the, the setup for this. So on to Carl Jung. Indeed, it is becoming ever more obvious, he writes, that it is not famine, not earthquakes, not microbes, not cancer, but man himself, who is man's greatest danger to man for the simple reason that there is no adequate protection against psychic epidemics, which are infinitely more devastating than the worst of natural catastrophes. <laughs> yeah, very well said. Uh, very wordy. I mean, we're, we like that kind of stuff, you know. Well, we're, we're wordy <laughs> ourselves. Yeah. But look, uh, <laughs> look this, is, this is, as they say in the very beginning of the video, as Orwell and as a whole bunch of other people have noted and used the the basis of this is fear yes um fear you know fear and uh you know if we want to get uh humanist about it a lack of education because what is you know another spoiler you know what is an the the one of the only practical answers i can think to having a society filled with human beings who are subject to this condition is teaching people how to think, teach, teaching things like critical thinking, right? Mm -hmm. Off the bat, so that mm -hmm. you've got something mm -hmm. to guide you besides what makes you feel good, just something, right. something. But this anything. is the opposite of that. This is, this is you know, uh, sort of diseducating or disarming the possibility of education among the population by making critical uh, and reflective thought impossible because you're I, always the fight or flight. That we, we no. ab absolutely agreed, as Sam Harris put it in one of his uh, discussions of this, there is a multi-front war going on for our attention and most of us are losing. Losing, yeah. Yeah, oh. most of us as right. individuals, he right. means very clearly. No, no, not some vague thing, but you sitting there right now, you're losing the war unless you're doing something about this right now. You're right. Losing. Even if you are, because, you know, we know <laughs> that uh, our attention now has been quite effectively commodified by <laughs> the algorithms of, of, of surveillance capitalism. So you know, our attention is being monetized for someone else, even, even, you know, whether, whether we're happy to be doing well at the moment or not. No, no. Well, to some extent always has been say in with television, what was the product of television viewers, not exactly. TV shows. Mm -hmm. um, but that's, a, that's, you know, that's a whole other. Well, this thing. is, this isn't, like I said earlier, uh, agreeing with you, Vincent, this is not, different from TV. One of the things that we've learned through studying psychology is that 
uh, flashing images in front of a person oh. during any kind of thing where they're not even conscious of it can uh, create reactions. So a single image can be incredibly powerful. And if that image is subliminal, that's one thing. But if that image is not subliminal, then it has a much more exposure time and it's going to have more effect. Our brain, we're, we're visual creatures. Our brains are hardwired into that stuff. And the 1920s, when they, when advertising finally realized that, you know, uh, psychology had figured out the keys to selling stuff, you know, sex, food, greed, you know, the, 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 the basic avarices of, of humanity is the way to make money um and, uh, well, and 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 then there is the sort of fear sector which is the way not towards money but towards power yep. and towards getting a population to disarm itself and to you know the heart of this mass psychosis video is uh, about the ideas of uh, used merlo from the Netherlands reacting to the totalitarian oh, the, uh, the rape of the oh, mind. They talk the about his book, the rape, the rape of, of the mind. mind. And, right, uh, right. and the crime or the, the, the verb of menticide. Menticide. Yeah, why don't we move on yeah. to, to, uh, to that part of the video. Menticide. And, uh, and get a look at, at uh, good old... Uh, I don't Yost. know what it is, but I don't like it. Yeah. Mentis so, so this is an important one. I just want to stop here for just for a second, because I think it's important to bring in Arthur for Slaus, because um, what Arthur for Slaus was studying was uh, th what happens to people who live under totalitarian regimes from a psychological point of view. And what he was saying is that the people that he was studying who had lived under totalitarian regimes um, were acting like people who were suffer suffering from psychosis. Um, all of the classic signs of psychosis. And, and Which means that mass psychosis is also an individual psychosis. Right, it's just a lot of individual Yeah, psychosis. yeah, right, yeah. right. That's, yeah. The, that's the part about it that scares the crap out of me. Yeah. You know, it's, it's a whole bunch of people somehow, individually, that you got to sit across the of the you know the table from at a holiday you know family members you know this is yeah it's very personal stuff well it's for some of us it's feeling very uh invader invaders of the body snatch invasion of the body snatchers it's it's getting to the point where where you're looking at people uh, well one of the things we know very clearly uh -huh. about people is in order to hurt other people we need to dehumanize, dehumanize them it. first yes right yes. and part of the humanist movement and 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 very much a part of, of uh, a lot of the left-leaning uh, side of things is about making the us in the us-them as big as possible and getting as many people to be seen as members as, of- As us as us. possible. Yes. Right. And, and right. The, the other side is very much about making the us very defined by physical characteristics or from by money so, uh, so whatever tribal it's it's a try it let I, I like to just call it all tribal that's you fine know? but the you point know? being that that uh one is trying to make the tribe big so that it's inclusive and the other is trying to make the, the the create fear by making it small yes. and making that smaller tribe feel that they're being replaced the the whole you know Tucker feel, Carlson feel vulnerable the, to an enemy Yes. You know, and build up the enemy more if you're more them, them, whereas the uh, those on the humanist side throughout history, I guess, have have, you know, wanted to uh, to bring us to a, a state of of more reflection, you know, able to uh, call our better angels into being all that sort of mental stuff. And right. It, it, it is quite vulnerable to an attack from fear, yep. which disarms the 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 higher angels, you know, and the intellect and reason. And uh, as we've spoken about a number of times, brings us way down on the Maslow pyramid of needs, right? Um, we're we're, yeah, of we're right. getting bumped down to where we're just worried whether or not we're safe in our house because they're people Your physical come with guns. survival. So yes, I gotta have exactly. guns. Priming a population for the crime of menticide begins with the sowing of fear. When an individual is flooded with negative emotions, such as fear or anxiety, he or she is very susceptible to a descent into the delusions of madness. Threats real, imagined, or fabricated can be used to sow fear. 
but a particularly effective technique is to use waves of terror. Under this technique, the sowing of fear is staggered with periods of calm, but each of these periods of calm is followed by the manufacturing of an even more intense spell of fear. And on and on, the process goes. Or as Mirlu writes, each wave of terrorizing creates its effects more easily after a breathing spell than the one that preceded it because people are still disturbed by their previous experience. Morality becomes lower and lower and the psychological effects of each new propaganda campaign become stronger. It reaches a public already softened up. Mm. So I want to stop it so we can still see this graph because I think this graph perfectly explains uh, the oh. people that I know personally who have started to call up upon the dismantling of our democracy in order to protect them from what they're scared of, right? I tell you what this with this map, uh, this map reminds me if if you know we go across historical time over the course of our lifetimes, you know, I've lived through uh, you know three different eras of people from that R party in the White House. And uh, it's really been like that, you know. Uh, how how psychotic are we? How weapons of mass destruction are we? And, and you know, it now seems inevitable unless we can somehow prevent, you know, one of the two major U.S. political parties from regaining the White House. It seems inevitable that when they get it, we'll be in a much you know higher state. The waves of terror campaign. It's not uh, you know. It's not equivalent to saying that any one or any group of people has consciously set this up over decades, but uh, but that's where we are. The terror is going to get. I just, I would just respectfully like to disagree about exempting the other major political party. I think there's a great deal it's, of it's their, their role of bringing of bringing us down to calm and setting up, you know, a, a, a lesser calm, a more tense calm than the previous one and susceptible to a greater fear the next time. That's their role. I mean, the, the people who run both parties are essentially billionaires. Uh, and uh, both parties are in agreement about billionaires running stuff at the end of the day. It's just they disagree about how to control the rest of us. And one party wants to do it through, you know, good old, good old time religion. And the other party has a more, you know, admittedly enlightened and progressive way of doing all of this stuff. But I fear could be you also, you know, easily in the wrong hands, you know, turned into something quite unpleasant. Um, so why don't we so why don't we go, Vince, into what you wanted to talk about, which is what can be done, what right. must be done. OK, here we are. Right. And, and this is this is what I'm thinking about this. OK, so here we are where I, for one, am saying, all right, after spending all of that time uh, on electoral politics recently, now I'm withdrawing from that and I'm putting most, if not all of my cards here in humanism. And how do I as a humanist want to react to this pretty all destructive, uh, uh, Roger, you summed it up quite nicely, planet killing behavior that's going on with these people. Um, and so how, how are we, uh, how are we going to react as as humanists? Uh, I think I and I think we've already instinctively. This is what's interesting to me about what we're up to is instinctively we're already doing some of the most important things that they talk about at the end of this video when they're saying, "Okay, what do we?" We're we're get we're saying, "Okay, we're looking to get people off our phones, you know, and screens, and get." in touch with each other and have community these parallel structures that the 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 czech yeah, uh politician was talking yeah. about now this is this is old stuff parallel structures gay people with the bar scenes and these all mm -hmm. you know the the uh, polari in england and uh, uh, secret language and all the rest of that stuff yes absolutely we're looking to and 
there's a whole conversation to be had, guys, about what we think about the shape of our institutions right now, including mm-hmm. our political institutions, because I'm 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 alarmed. I, I, I don't see you know. it protecting us from the, you know, the descent <sighs> into delusion or, or uh, protecting themselves. Right. I mean, they, they're going to be on the Titanic, too. They're going to have a nice, you know, they're going to have a nicer uh, time. Uh, but I mean, there's certainly a, a, a great lack of responsibility towards the planet killing behavior <sighs> from both parties, even, even if one, you know, embraces the mass psychosis and the other feigns opposition to it. You know, it occurred to me while I was watching, you know, the fear that uh, that they deploy how come, you know, it, it only seems to work if it's directed, you know, at an, at an other, you know, towards uh, that sort of primal kind Be- of. Because that's why can't worked. we deploy some, deploy some fear about the end of, of, of civilization, about mass extinction, you know, about uh, the extinction of this species and all the other species that we love? How can't that, why can't we use some of that fear? Wouldn't that be useful? So I think what's interesting there, Roger, is that, <laughs> is that we have been. That Part of the problem with that message is that I've been hearing that message since I was able to understand, yeah. right? Yeah. I was told that yeah, the that's world true. was being destroyed. I was it's told true. that we were ruining the oceans. I was to- and, and what I believed was happening, uh, and naively so, um, is I thought that the civil society, that government, which had gotten money from my parents at the time and then me later to run things, were putting into, into place policies that, although going back and forth on the political spectrum, were moving us steadily towards better protections for the environment, uh, trying to look at things from a scientific point of view. We all remember acid rain. Acid rain was a huge thing. Well, you know what? We kicked acid rain's butt, but that was the 1980s, and we're not yeah, afraid for, anymore. For a brief we're, while. Yeah, we're so we're so desensitized to it. Uh, one of the things I, I always bring up when we get into this part of the conversation is breaking news. Have you ever been on a news station in the past whatever years that every little thing is breaking news, and they're always breaking and uh, uh, if i was ever to have a sit down talk with one of these uh don lemons or or rachel maddow's right these these kings of liberal media i'd be saying what first of all you're selling soap it's always been that way that's what news is for but second of all (laughs) why do we always have to be up here i understand that that human psychology that it bleeds it leads we all want to look at the dis- dismembered person because you know the schadenfreude and 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 uh, and you know our own sense of moral mortality and all that but do we have to really hit that nerve every time and the answer seems to be yes because that's how we get to sell our soap um which yeah, um, if you're network television yes yeah but uh, uh you know the uh. the the academy of ideas uh, which is not quite, you know, sponsored by Procter and Gamble, uh, may be more closely sponsored by when humanists attack, is saying first order your own mind, yeah. you know, get off your phone, uh, go out and breathe some fresh air, disconnect and reflect, and remember the the power that exists within, you know, your own being and mind. So yes, that is very helpful. So the other thing that, and, and Valkov Havel was saying it, is he was living inside a communist country, and in order to survive the mass psychosis, they created parallel structures. What that means is um, groups of people getting together and living in a mental space that was their own that was not influenced by the mass psychosis that yeah, was yeah of course which them. is which is why those governments try to crush anything like that you right. know it's I mean, not i understand the threat you know, autonomous yeah. autonomous little institutions and <laughs> yeah, yeah but one of that. my my whipping horses these days uh is is the idea that we need to create you know, robust parallel structures as humanists, as secular humanists. If if the Catholic Church is not going to uh, is going to be forced uh, by by yeah. the laws 
the, the city of Philadelphia is going to be forced by the laws to hire the Catholic Church to find adoptive parents, but they're, that the Catholic Church is allowed to discriminate against people who don't fit their idea of who should be a good parent, we're in trouble, right? We're in a place where we need to have parallel structures. I want a humanist parallel structure to step in and, and take that job from the Catholic Church in a place like Philadelphia. I want, if we're going to have private mm -hmm. prisons, I want humanist private prisons let's look at how humanists can deal with the years and years of psychological abuse that the people who end up in prisons have obviously been subjected to and try to to find ways of of getting these people help <laughs> and uh, uh, and not reduce let re recidivism rather than increase it so that you've got an ever-expanding customer base you know i mean really yeah <laughs> imagine Oh man, what is that? <laughs> yeah, so the, but that's, the, you know. The okay. story, the, I have a graphic here, I'll bring it up. The story uh, in the end is um, how, do you, how do you fight totalitarianism? How do you fight the things that are putting these, these uh, fear creating uh, ideas into our society and perpetuating them? Right. The first one is number one, laugh at it, that, that these, these, Things. Think about Donald Trump and his inability to have anything but but ridicule as his humor, right? Um, and mm -hmm. so, if we start laughing at them, they just can't stand that. They can't handle uh, ridicule. So that's right. one. The second one, Vincent just said, and and the graphic was great. After cutting the the strings to your Facebook, uh, unplug from social media. And if you can't unplug all the way, then set times where you are on and not times when you're off right try to try to more time off than more time on and let me just briefly break in excuse me sure. the the positive way of putting that is live your physical life yeah. with other people yeah. the more offline time the more real interpersonal community you know the the more grounded you are in a, a reality that's likely to be quietly sane and the final one was the one I was just harping on that we've all said is uh, to create those parallel structures. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yes. What parallel structure would we be developing first as a group, much less as a community? I'm not sure. Well, um, we, we are already starting, right? We're gonna start these local meetup groups and we're gonna start meeting with people near us and uh, start creating local humanist or be a part of the growing movement of local humanist groups that are getting together. Um, this is, we're not the first people to come up with this. We're not gonna be the last. We're one in a, a, a myriad oh, yeah. of groups of people who are doing this. So um, we can be part of that movement and stand up for what we believe in, stand up for our principles. Thanks for watching the video to the end and uh, watch the Academy of Ideas one to the end too. It's worth it. The uh, When Humanists Attack is a project of the Humanist Being, a uh, nonprofit organization from the state of Vermont. Attention, attention, please stand by for another episode of When Humanists Attack. attack.